Buddhist Legends 8b. Life of Apatisa, Sariputta, and Kalita, Malana Before the Buddha appeared in the world, there were two Braham villages not far from Rajagaha named Apatisa village and Kalita village. One day a Braham's wife named Rupasari, who lived in Apatisa village, conceived a child in her womb, and on the same day a Braham's wife named Maale, who lived in Kalita village, likewise conceived a child in her womb. We are told that for seven generations these two families had been firmly knit and bound together in the bonds of friendship, they performed the protection of the embryo for the two expectant mothers on the same day. On the expiration of ten lunar months, both women gave birth to sons. On the day appointed for the naming of the children, they gave the name Apertisa to the son of the Braham woman whose name was Sari, because he was the son of the principal family in Apatisa village, to the other boy. Because he was the son of the principal family in Kalita village, they gave the name Kalita. As they grew up, both boys attained the highest proficiency in all the arts and sciences. Whenever the youth Apatisa went to the river or the garden to disport himself, five hundred golden litters accompanied him, five hundred chariots drawn by thoroughbreds accompanied the youth Kalita. The two youths had retinues of five hundred boys apiece. Now there is a festival celebrated every year in Rajagaha which goes by the name of Mountaintop Festival. A couch for the two youths was set up in one place, and the two youths sat together and witnessed the passing show. When there was occasion to laugh, they laughed, when there was occasion to weep, they wept, when it was time to give alms, they gave alms. In this way they witnessed the festivities for several days. But one day, when they had grown wiser, there was no laugh when they might have laughed, as on preceding days. There were no tears when they might have wept, and when their alms were sought they gave no alms. The following thought, we art old, occurred to the two youths, why should we look at this? Before a hundred years have passed, all these people will have gone hence and will no more be seen. It behooves us rather to seek the way of release. And taking this thought to heart, they sat down. Then Kalita said to Apatisa, Friend Apatisa, you do not appear to be pleased and delighted as on previous days. Nay rather, you are afflicted with melancholy. What is in your mind? Friend Kalita, I sit thinking, there is no lasting satisfaction in looking upon these folk, this is all unprofitable, it behoves me rather to seek the way of release for myself. But why are you melancholy? Kalita said the same thing. When Apatisa discovered that Kalita's thoughts were one with his own, he said, both of us have had a happy thought. It behooves us both to seek the way of release and to retire from the world together. Under what teacher shall we retire from the world? Now at this time a wandering ascetic named Sanjaya entered the city of Rajagaha, accompanied by a large retinue of wandering ascetics. We will retire from the world and become monks under Sanjaya, said Apatisa and Kalita. So they dismissed five hundred retainers, saying to them, Take the litters and the chariots and go and together with the remaining five hundred retired from the world and became monks under Sanjaya. From the day when these two youths retired from the world and became monks under Sanjaya, Sanjaya reached the pinnacle of gain and renown. In but a few days they had passed the bounds of Sanjaya's teaching. Therefore they asked him, Teacher, is this all the religious truth you know? Or is there something more besides? This is all there is, you know all. Apertisa and Kalita thought to themselves, if this is the case, it is profitless for us to remain pupils of this teacher any longer. The way of release we retired from the world to seek for, we certainly cannot obtain from this teacher. 
but the land of the rose apple is an extensive country. Let us journey through villages, market towns, and royal cities. We shall surely find some teacher who will expound to us the way of release. From that time forth, wherever they heard there was a learned monk or Braham, they went to him and held converse with him. The questions Apatisa and Gulita asked, the others were not able to answer, but every question the others asked. Apatisa and Gulita answered. In this manner they travelled all over the land of the rose apple, then they retraced their steps and returned to their own homes again. Before they separated, Apatisa said to Gulita, Friend Gulita, Whichever of us first attains the deathless is to inform the other. Having made this agreement, they separated. While they were living under this agreement, the teacher, after traveling from place to place as has been related above, arrived at Rajagaha, accepted the gift of Veluvana Monastery, and took up his residence at Veluvana. Now after the teacher had sent forth the sixty-one Arahats to proclaim the virtues of the three jewels, saying, Go forth, monks, preaching and teaching, one of the band of five, the great elder Asaji, turned back, came to Rajagaha, and on the following day, early in the morning, taking his bowl and his robe, entered Rajagaha for alms. On the same day, early in the morning, the wandering ascetic Apatisa ate his breakfast, and proceeding to the hermitage of the wandering ascetics, saw the elder. When he saw him, he thought to himself, Never before have I seen a monk like this monk. He must be one of those monks who have attained Arahatship in this world, or who have entered upon the path leading to Arahatship. Suppose I were to approach this monk and ask him, for whose sake, brother, have you retired from the world? And who is your teacher? And whose doctrine do you profess? Then, this thought occurred to him, it is not the proper time to ask this monk questions, for he is going from house to house for alms. Suppose I were to follow close in the footsteps of this monk, as those are wont to do who seek some favor? Therefore, Observing that the monk had received a portion of alms and was on his way to a certain place, and perceiving that he desired to sit down, he placed his own monk's stool on the ground and offered it to him, and when the monk had finished his meal, offered him water from his own water pot. Having thus performed the duties of a pupil to a teacher, he exchanged pleasant greetings with the elder after the meal was over and said to him, Come and serene, brother, are your organs of sense, clean and clear is the hue of your skin. For whose sake, brother, did you retire from the world? And who is your teacher? And whose doctrine do you profess? The elder thought to himself, these wandering ascetics are hostile to the religion I profess, therefore I will show this monk the profundity of our religion. But first he explained that he was himself a mere novice, saying, Brother, I am as yet a mere novice, no long time have I been a monk, but recently did I approach this doctrine and discipline, just now I shall not be able to expound the law at length, thought the wandering ascetic, I am. Apatisa, say much or little according to your ability, I will undertake to fathom the meaning in a hundred ways or a thousand ways. Therefore he said, Say little or much, tell me the substance only. I have need of the substance only, why utter many words? In response the elder pronounced the first line of the stanza. Of all things that proceed from a cause. Of these the cause the Tathagata hath told. So soon as the wandering ascetic heard the first line, he was established in the fruit of conversion, perfect in a thousand ways. So soon as he was established in the fruit of conversion, the elder completed the second line. And also how these cease to be. This too the mighty monk hath told. But after he had attained the fruit of conversion, the higher excellence failed to appear. Therefore he considered, 
there must be a reason for this, and said. To the elder, do not carry your teaching of the law any further, let this. Suffice. Where does our teacher reside? At Veluvana, brother. Well then. Reverend sir, you go on ahead. I have a friend, and he and I made the following agreement with each other, whichever of us first attains the deathless is to inform the other. I wish first to redeem this promise. I will bring my friend with me and go to the teacher, following the same path you take. So saying, Apertisa prostrated himself before the feet of the elder with the five rests, walked thrice around him sunwise, and then took leave of him and went to meet the leader of the wandering ascetics. The wandering ascetic Kalita saw him approaching from afar and said to himself, Today my friend's face has a hue not as on other days, it must be that he has attained the deathless. Therefore he asked him at once whether he had attained the deathless. Apertisa said in reply, Yes, brother, I have attained the deathless. So saying, he pronounced the same stanza as Aji had pronounced. At the conclusion of the stanza Kalita was established in the fruit of conversion. Thereupon Kalita said, Friend, where does our teacher reside? At Veluvana, friend. So I was informed by our teacher the elder Asaji. Well then, friend, let us go, let us see the teacher. Now it was a distinguishing trait of the elder Sariputta that he always held a teacher in profound respect. Therefore said he to his friend, Friend, let us inform our teacher, the wandering ascetic Sanjaya, that we have attained the deathless. Thus will his mind be awakened, and he will comprehend. But should he fail to comprehend, he will at any rate believe what we say to be true and so soon as he has listened to the preaching of the Buddhas, he will attain the path and the fruit. Accordingly the two wandering ascetics went to Sanjaya. When Sanjaya saw them, he asked, Friends, did you succeed in finding anyone able to show you the way to the deathless? Yes, teacher. Such a one have we found. The Buddha has appeared in the world, the law has appeared, the order has appeared. You, sir, are walking in vain on reality. Come, sir, let us go to the teacher. You may go, I cannot go. For what? Reason? In the past I have gone about as a teacher of the multitude. For me to become a pupil again would be as absurd as for a chatty to go to the well. I shall not be able to live the life of a pupil. Do not act thus, teacher. Never mind friends, you may go, but I cannot go. Teacher, from the moment of the Buddha's appearance in the world the populace will take perfumes, garlands, and so forth in their hands and will go and do honor to him alone. Let us also go there. What do you intend to do? Friends, which are more numerous in this world, the stupid or the wise? Teacher, the stupid are many, the wise are few. Well then, Friends, let the wise men go to the wise monk Gautama, and let the stupid come to stupid me. You may go, but I shall not go. You will become a famous man. Teacher, said his two former pupils, and departed. As they departed, Sanjayas. Congregation broke up, at that instant the grove was empty. When Sanjaya saw that the grove was empty, he vomited hot blood. 500 wandering ascetics accompanied the two on their journey a little way. Of these, two hundred and fifty remained loyal to Sanjaya and turned back, the other two hundred and fifty wandering ascetics the two received as their own pupils and took with them to Veluvana. As the teacher sat in the midst of the fourfold congregation preaching the law, he saw the two wandering ascetics approaching from afar. Straight away he addressed the monks, Monks, here come two friends, Kalita and Dapatisa. They will become my pair of disciples, my chief and noble pair. The two wandering ascetics paid obeisance to the teacher, sat down respectfully on one side, 
and spoke thus to the teacher, Reverend Sir, we should like to receive admission to the order at the hands of the Exalted One, we should like to make our full profession, said the Exalted One, come, monks. The law has been well taught. Lead the holy life, to the end that all suffering may be utterly done away. Instantly they became possessed of bowls and robes, created by supernatural power, and became as it were elders of a hundred years' residence. By the acts of the company of his disciples the teacher caused the preaching of the law constantly to increase, with the exception of the two chief disciples. All attained eratship. The two chief disciples, however, did not complete the meditations leading to the three higher paths. What was the reason for this? It was because of the magnitude of the perfection of knowledge of chief disciples. Now Venerable Malana the Great, residing near the village Kalavla in the kingdom of Magadha, fell into sloth and torpor on the seventh day after the day of his reception into the order. But aroused by the teacher, he shook off sloth and torpor, and applying himself to the formula of meditation on the elements given him by the Tathagata, completed the meditations leading to the three higher paths and attained the goal of the perfection of knowledge of chief disciples. As for the elder Sariputta, he spent the fortnight following his reception into the order with the teacher, residing at Sukharakata cave near the same city. Rajagaha, having heard an exposition of the Veda Naparigaha Sadanta by his own sister's son, the wandering monk Dihangaka, he applied his mind to the Sada and like a man who eats rice boiled for another man, attained the goal of the perfection of knowledge of chief disciples. Surely the Venerable Sariputta is a man of great intelligence. Why, then, does he require a longer time than Malana the Great to attain the goal of the perfection of knowledge of chief disciples? Because the preliminaries are so elaborate. We must understand that the case is analogous to that of a king, who, when he wishes to set out on a journey, is obliged to make great preparations, such as caparisoning riding elephants. On the other hand a poor man, no matter where he may wish to go, immediately goes there without more ado. On the very day when Sariputta and Malana were received into the order, as the shadows of evening lengthened, the teacher gathered his disciples together at Veluvana, assigned the place of chief disciples to the newcomers, and then recited the Patamogha. The monks were offended and said, The teacher shows favoritism in bestowing this distinction. In bestowing the place of chief disciples, he ought to give the preference to those who were the first to retire from the world, namely, the band of five. If he disregard air, claims, he ought to give the preference to the elder Yasa and his fifty-four companions. If he disregard their claims, he ought to give the preference to the thirty youths. If he disregard their claims, he ought to give the preference to the three brothers, Ruvlaka Sapa, Nautika Sapa, and Gayaka Sapa. In rejecting the prior claims of all these monks and giving the place of chief disciples to those who retired from the world last of all, the teacher shows favoritism. The teacher asked them, monks, what is the subject you are discussing? When they told him, he said, monks, I show no favoritism in bestowing this distinction. On the contrary I bestow on these monks and on all others that for which each has made his earnest wish. For Anakondana gave the first fruits of a certain crop nine times, but in so doing did not make an earnest wish for the place of chief disciple. On the contrary, in bestowing his gift, he made the earnest wish that he might be the first to win the foremost estate of all, namely, Arachip. When was that, Reverend Sir? Listen, monks. Yes, Reverend Sir. Thereupon the Exalted One related the following, thereupon the Exalted One related the following, thereupon the Exalted One related the following.